This StarCast show, just like all of our StarCast shows, are available at adfreeshows.com. So I want to start to set the stage here. So you obviously have been around the business a little over 10 years when ECW started to come about. What was your first impressions of ECW? Because at the time, with all the tables and the blood and the groundbreaking, the different sort of athletic style, there were people in the business that were like, oh, this is garbage, it's going to ruin the business. You were trained by Eddie Sharkey. You no. came up... What, am I Brad wrong? Rangans. Bra Brad Rangans, I'm sorry. Yes. Well, Brad and Eddie trained others but together. But Eddie, when I first started, Eddie gave me a lot of work. I worked for him quite a bit. Yeah. So you trained by Brad Rangans, Olympian, great technical wrestler. You obviously, your, your mindset for wrestling is brought, in a, brought up in a certain way. What are your first impressions when you start seeing ECW as, as someone in the business but not involved in the company? All right, if you've heard other interviews, you've heard this story. But at the time, the first time I saw it, I was wrestling for WCW, and I was living in Atlanta. And we, I found out about it through a buddy. So I, it was on, you know, 2 o'clock in the morning on some obscure channel. We'd sit and watch it together. And I told my buddy after seeing it, I said, that is one company I will never work for. Because... <laughs> These guys are hitting each other in the head with microwave ovens and Super Nintendo, whatever the fans would hand over the rail. They'd just grab it and crack each other. And uh, I didn't want to get, I mean, you know, even years before that when uh, Sean, X-Pac, when we had our feud up in Minneapolis, I mean, we, we brought it. I mean, we were clocking each other with uh, beer mugs and whatever we'd get our hands on, you know. But uh, by that time, I was... and watching Balls and Sandman trade chair shots, I was like, holy moly, you know, I... I I didn't want any part of that. And uh, when, um, I think after I was done with WCW, I had a tryout match with Taka Michinoku for WWF. And when Paulie saw that air, he knew I was available. And he had Chris Candido get a hold of me. And Chris called me up and he says, hey, Paulie wants to know if you want to do a couple shots. And I said, okay. I said, here's what I want. And I said, one more thing. I said, I don't want some idiot hit me in the head with a frying pan. And Chris goes, no, 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 we got our wrestlers and we got our brawlers. And I said, all right. Well, there was a time period in like ni late 97, late 1998, where you and Chris Chetty, either as a team or in singles matches, usually kind of carried the core pure wrestling of the, li of the live events. Like as the card went up, it got a little crazier and you had the New Jacks and the Sandmans and the brawling. But the opening matches in the mid card were always some stronger, serious wrestling matches. And you and Chetty were like the guys that would kind of carry that end. What, when you were first brought in, like, what, what, what sort of expectation did Paul Heyman ex give you in terms of a push, in terms of positioning in the card, or was it just, it just kind of grew week by week? I think it just kind of grew. The, the great thing about ECW is we had a lot of freedom in the ring. So he really didn't tell me, you know, hold me back or tell me to do this or that. I was able to just go out and do what I do. The, um, the feud with Rob, we'll start talking about in a minute, but... You've had a number of moments in ECW where you had to have turned your head and gone, what am I doing here? So what were some of the stranger things that you saw happen either behind the scenes or at ECW where you were like, maybe I should question my life choices a bit? Uh, you know, it was, a, it was a crew that lived hard and played hard, you know, and it, I always describe it as a, a rock tour times 10 because it was pretty crazy. And the sad thing is, there's a lot that aren't here anymore. A lot. And I don't mean to start bringing this on a down, you know, but, but that's the truth. But it was, uh, at the same time, because of the crew and how crazy it was, every weekend when I'm packing my bags and getting ready to head to the airport, I was excited and looking forward to it because I knew I was going to be thoroughly entertained. And not, not just by the fans, because the fans were just as crazy, but just in the back with the boys. Who do you think uh, was the craziest in terms of would make? Because for me, it was Balls Mahoney. Like Balls, like I once watched Balls Mahoney walk around a locker room wearing nothing but a bathrobe and carrying like a chalice, and I'm like, what is going on? And, like you walk in the building and, and hey, what's going on? And he just wanders right past me. And I'd like, seen him get off a plane right at the airport, waiting for him, and wearing uh, these bright yellow smiley face boxer shorts. That was his, <laughs> I was like, wow. And nothing else? I'm like, I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking he's brave. <laughs> but uh, I don't think you get through TSA today with those. Right. But yeah, I don't think you can compare every, each, all the boys to how, who was the craziest because everyone was crazy in their own way, you know.
Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.